we are moving to a academic session dr kishor young uh, pediatric endocrinologist practice in hyderabad who has experience of uh, treating a growth hormone deficiency disorders so we are lucky to have a speaker like uh, kishor who has experience in uh, this is uh, thank you sinha sir for kind introduction uh, today i am going to talk on uh, weekly growth hormone in diagnosed cases of pediatric growth hormone deficiency so before moving into my talk i would i would like to thank organizer for in inviting and making this to happen today so i want to like welcome you all so the first time around 1950 it was uh, extracted from the animals and human cadavers around 1957 1958 so first human growth hormone which was extracted from the pituitary gland was injected into the patient for the first time so since then growth hormone showing so much of miracles especially in pediatric uh, children with growth hormone deficiency so isolated growth hormone deficiency is one of the most common pituitary hormone defect and it is a rare disorder and the diagnosis depends on combination of oxological clinical biochemical genetic metabolic and hormonal abnormalities short stage is a key in diagnosis of gsd it may be congenital acquired or may be idiopathic it has a diagnostic challenge uh, be because there are no standard guidelines and even as, uh, uh, diagnosing growth hormone predominantly depends on oxological criteria but to support the uh, diagnosis we need uh, confirmatory test so whatever the provocation test we are using they are not gold standard so at least two uh, provocation tests should meet the criteria of failure to respond on two different occasion then only we can able to diagnose growth hormone deficiency there are no standard uh, standard cut offs of igf1 igf bp3 level especially in developing in countries like in indian children but still nowadays there is a significant data is coming up and uh, low igf1 level are suggest of uh, gsd mri and x ray hand they will help us to reach our clinical diagnosis so which children should be evaluated any child whose height is less than two standard deviation if the height is not uh, meeting the mid parental height or familial background and there is a significant decrease or fall of growth velocity they need evaluation so it's still oxological accurate and repeated measurements are key for the diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency and growth hormone is produced in a pulsatile manner uh more predominant in night and uh, there are different provocation tests and different agents are used uh, in india we use uh, our, uh, like clonidin uh, provocation test in uh, children who are less than 1 to 2 years in my practice i may use insulin as a pro uh, provocating agent for the diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency and there are different guidelines and uh, they have a different diagnostic criteria according to the national guidelines so predominantly we follow usa and uh, uk guidelines we usually take cut off of 10 and also we use uh, clonidine as a growth uh, provocating test so uh, and we routinely use priming so any children who is having tanner stage of 1 and chronological age of 9 year for the girl and uh, chronological age of boys in those we will do priming we use both testosterone and estrogen for the priming agent and before doing priming and evaluation child should meet the criteria where the height is less than 2 z score growth velocity is less than 25th centile and sometimes we may ask for the repeated measurement so wait and watch may be required and we do bone age assessment at least it should be delayed by 1 to 2 years then we will go for the provocation test and when the growth hormone level is less than 10 we confirm and diagnose as a growth hormone deficiency so like growth hormone therapy is an essential component for the treatment of gsd so the as earlier said the clinical implication of growth hormone journey started from last 30 to 40 years of uh, timeline and recently long acting growth hormone is started like and uh, approved in 2022 first time in uh, usa and uk in 2022 so there are different indications of uh, growth hormone like growth hormone deficiency ckd turner syndrome prader willi syndrome sga idiopathic short stature noonan syndrome and chronic diseases and even we are i have mentioned skeletal dysplasia but routinely in skeletal dysplasia we are not using growth hormone 
only east uh, asian and eastern eastern countries are supporting to use growth hormone in achondroplasia whereas in india we are not using growth hormone for achondroplasia so growth hormone is not only for attaining growth improve the growth velocity and final uh, height outcome in children it also help to improve the quality of life cardiovascular problems will be minimized metabolic and endocrine uh, parameters will be improved in children who received growth hormone and peak protein content in both uh, muscle and bone will be achieved with a growth hormone so when there is a possibility you can continue growth hormone even in adults but at least in children we use growth hormone supplementation at least they reached final height or when the epiphysis are fused till then we use growth hormone so what are the challenges in growth hormone is presentation so usually in indian children they present at the age of 2 years and 10 to 12 years of age because around 2 3 years of age they started going play school or primary school then when compared to other peer groups they found the child will be short and when there is a pubertal abnormality or a delayed puberty and because of the alteration in pubertal spurt the child noted that they have a growth hormone uh, related problem then they will come to clinics and late diagnosis will give a late treatment and growth will grow as a dynamic icp model of growth curve infant child and pubertal growth uh, uh, spurting will be there there are different parameters which will influence the effect of growth hormone so i am not going in detail uh so it is not a problem in developing countries where there are resource uh, limited conditions are there but even resourceful conditions like germany united kingdom spain the delay diagnosis is the problem so the delay diagnosis result in delay treatment and uh, like a mean age of presentation was around 5 to 7 years whereas in united states it went up to 10 years so we are not away from the western countries even in indian countries the mean age of presentation diagnosis and treatment is around 9 to 10 years and sometimes it may go around uh, post pubertal age so by delayed initiation of the treatment final outcome will be impaired so the final outcome will be we want to increase a child so near adult height should be reached so if we start uh, growth hormone early the near adult height will be achieved uh, almost like adult if you started late the near adult height percentage will be minimized so not only reaching adult height the change in height deviation score if you started early the change of high deviation score will be almost minus 2 to 2.5 z score will be changed if you initiated early especially pre pubertal before 8 9 years if you initiated growth hormone the change in height standard deviation score will be very minimal it may be less than 1 z score so 66% of the children who missed one or two injection the final height outcome will be minimized and compromised so as shown in uh, new zealand study so almost 66% of the children they missed growth hormone if they missed more than 3 injections in a week so almost the change in height z score will be only less than uh, minus 0.5 to minus 1 z score if they continued at least 6 times injection in a week the near adult height reach and height velocity change will be almost like a normal children so missing growth hormone will affect the final outcome so adherence so why the children are missing growth hormone because of the adherence because of the daily therapy they are not comfortable they miss injection they may forget it so it was like uh, proved and confirmed in ecus studies so it is like easy pot there is a device it is a electronic devices it will have a injection injection calculator so there, there is a pre designed injection calculator doses so at the end of week or at the end of one month the children will be called for the follow up and they they will ask for how many injections were missed and how many injections were given so if they misses more than 75% of injection so the adherence will be uh, drastically come down so the final outcome will be decline so it is not only problem related to the uh, caregivers and patient even clinicians also facing, facing a lot of problem so 52% of the children they miss growth hormone daily injection the because is especially in adults they miss injection fear of pain and they are reluctant to seek the medical advice so because of n number of reasons they are not happy to take injection so because of that adherence will be compromised and by uh, like taking growth hormone daily the psychosocial outcome and the quality of life of a children with growth hormone will be compromised so the uh, another outcome whenever we are uh, dealing with any child with growth hormone deficiency not only attaining final height we should concentrate on quality of life and soko social adjustment so it will be compromised so in japanese study 
especially in GHD and idiopathic short stature, without starting growth hormone itself, the quality of life will be compromised. By taking growth hormone daily, there is no much change in improvement in quality of life. So now I'm moving to the long-acting growth hormone. As everybody know, growth hormone is a, a polypeptide protein. It contains 191 amino acids. So now I'm talking about the long-acting growth hormone. The structure is altered, but the function and efficacy of growth hormone will be maintained. How it will be maintained? So HCG, three CTP copies will be attached to the growth hormone. One will be at the five terminal and another two copies will be at the three, three terminal. The clearance of growth hormone will be compromised, but the potency, efficacy and the duration, uh, the action of the growth hormone will be per, uh, maintained with the long acting growth hormone. So is long acting we are trying for the first time in growth hormone patients? No, there are existing growth hormone alteration in another, condi uh, another condition in other specialties. Like in hematological conditions, like in hemophilia, the routine regimen is prophylaxis of uh, anti uh, clotting factors weekly, like uh, daily, three times in a weekly or like that. But by introducing long acting therapy, like once weekly prophylactic dosing, greater adherence will be improved, robust hemostasis is maintained, low bleeding rates, no major safety concerns are noted. So not only in hemophilia, coming to our specialty like endocrine in type 2 diabetes, initially we used to give GLP uh, daily therapy with liraglutide, but now uh, recently Trulicity, Exinetide, which are weekly and uh, by fort, uh, fortnightly growth uh, GLP-1 analogs are available, so significantly increase the incidence, uh, adherence, treatment satisfaction is improved, there is an improved quality of life. So that's the reason we are also keen in introducing long-acting growth hormone in children where adherence, safety and long-term outcome is questionable. So we want to move from daily therapy to weekly therapy of growth hormone. So by introducing weekly therapy, what are the advantage? So uh, the injection frequency will be reduced so that adherence will be improved. Once adherence is improved, efficacy of the growth hormone will be improved and increased flexibility. So there are different uh, efficacy and safety trials. I don't want to uh, go in detail, elaborate, but just I want to uh, tell about the crux of the studies. So it is Jelinska et al. study, so which was published in 2021 and 22. So inclusion criteria are mentioned here. So the children who are at the time of enrollment categorically grouped into two groups. One is weekly therapy and one is daily therapy. And again, weekly therapy regimens, children are subcategorized into different dose regimens, subgroups. One is 0.25 milligram per kg per week, 0.44 milligram per kg per week, 0.66 milligram per kg per week. So what was the final outcome? We want to compare is weekly therapy is comparable with daily therapy or not. At the end of one year, we want to know what will be the uh, adequate dose of growth hormone weekly therapy, whether it is a 0.48 or 0.66 or 0.24. So we, we thought, uh, like they thought initially it was a 0.48 will be adequate, but subsequently for their... Uh, knowledge they came to know that 0.66 milligram per kg per week will support maximum efficacy at the end of one year. That's the reason after extended one year, they have sub, uh, subgrouped the daily therapy into weekly therapy and at the end of two years, all children receive 0.66 mg per kg per week and they continued the study for the five years. So at the end of five years, what they noted is 0.6 mg per kg per week of long-acting growth hormone ha is equally effective, non-inferior, there are no major side effects and uh, it can be given and even IJ1 level will be maintained even uh, after 5 years of time. So whatever I have quoted, so these are the data available, the red uh, uh, bar diagram is indicating uh, weekly therapy, so 12.5. So other uh, weekly 0.6 is also mg per kg week efficacy is equally effective. And moving to the third study, so because in phase two study only developed nations were included, developing in, uh, nations like India is not included. So in phase three study, developing nation like India is included. So in this study, so two groups are uh, like uh, chosen. One group is 0.34 mg per kg per day of daily therapy and another group they received 0.66 mg per kg per week and they have studied for one year and at the end of one year they noted that daily therapy and weekly therapy there is no much difference weekly therapy is not at all inferior so it favors so demographic data age sex ethnicity parameters all are comparable there is no statistical difference in efficacy of the weekly therapy of growth hormone and even ij1 level 
so after one month of therapy itself when there is a igf1 was very low before starting in initiation of the treatment one year of treatment itself they achieved 0 to plus 2 z score of igf1 level even at the end of one year the final igf1 level there is no much significant difference we think that giving one more just two minutes so by giving weekly therapy of growth hormone which is such a high dose 0.66 mg per kg per week we think that growth hormone may be significantly elevated but after one year of therapy also it will be readjusted so there is no significant much difference of igf1 standard deviation difference and the children who are receiving weekly therapy of growth hormone they are mo uh, more positively detected to be having positive antibody against the growth hormone so almost 80 percent of the children who received growth hormone for weekly therapy they detected to have positive antibodies still presence of antibody is not deciding the efficacy and side effects so treatment emergent adverse events there is no much difference with the daily therapy and weekly therapy so it is also indicating safe immunogenicity is good safe, uh, safety efficacy is good and equally uh, competitively effective with growth hormone coming to the cost factor yes there are financial cost concerns and uh, interference uh, burden studies are also uh, telling that uh, cost factor will be in, uh, increased exponentially but burden and interference of the parents on growth hormone and lifestyle will be improved with uh, weekly therapy of growth hormone. So, so summary is diagnosis and management of pediatric growth hormone is a challenging for both clinician and patients. Timely diagnosis and management are critical for improving the outcome in growth hormone. Uh, but diagnosis delays are common. If you minimize the de uh, delay in diagnosis, the cost concern and financial burden will be coming down to the children. So daily therapy is routinely advisable, but it's giving a lot of challenge to the patient and care, uh, caregivers. Adherence to daily growth hormone is suboptimal. That's the reason we want to move to weekly therapy. So long-acting preparation of growth hormone have a potential to improve adherence and clinical outcome. With this, I'm closing my presentation. Thank you.